Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first in the series of Sessions with Simran. And my first guest is Richard Beaumont, a human design reader. And I had an amazing session with him a few months ago, and I wanted to share human design with you and share some of Richard's huge insights into my life and how to move forward. And he explained so much about how things have been for me that I wanted to share it with everyone. So see if it resonates. And as always, you can get Richard's details at the bottom um, of this video and you can book sessions with him. So with that, I'm just going to hand over to Richard so that he can introduce himself. Hi, Richard. Hello there. Hi, Fran. So um, yeah, I'm Richard Beaumont. I've been in human design for more than 20 years. Um, I ran a Mind, Body, Spirit magazine for 20 years as well called Kindred Spirit. And as part of that, I had a um, a proposal for an article on human design, which I wasn't really interested in at the time. I mean, I was running a magazine, I wanted to give people experiences, I wanted to bring them information in a holistic, uh, holistic information to help them with their lives. Yeah. And because I was, so, I was in another meeting in two weeks time close to where the guy lived, I got my reading. But then I got intrigued because it's like, how did you know this information? How did you get, you know, how do you know that? So I grilled him for about three hours. Yeah. Then I agreed to work with him on the articles to put it in there. And then I moved on because that's the magazine. You're always ahead of, with magazines. You have to keep moving. And it was an ongoing uh, feast of things to cover and read and research. Two months later, I got the opportunity to meet the founder of Human Design. And I was free. So I thought, okay. Check it out. Why not? It, looked, it could be interesting. Yeah. I had no idea what I was walking into. I had no idea what I was walking into. As soon as um, Ra Uruhu, the founder, began to teach us, the truth of what he said was shocking to me, basically. Yeah. I just wanted to know more, and I couldn't believe it. You know, it's one of those surreal um experiences you know you're in it you go is this a dream <laughs> you know is this is this is, can he is this really true because it sounds true to me from my own experience so this is when he was doing covering profiles so it was a long time ago it was uh yeah a long time more than 20 years ago so you started that, that changed every, that changed everything that changed everything that got me into human design and although i was running the magazine and yes i started the magazine um, in 1987, actually, uh, at a time when alternatives weren't really that popular or known about. Yeah? Someone, someone doing, um, you know, aromatherapy was like, oh, okay, you're one of us. You know, you're in the alternative world because the whole idea was to bring together holistic forces, um, care for the planet, uh, uh, alternative uh, therapies, alternative medicine, yeah. um, spiritual paths, this kind of thing to to spread that that was my and i still am very holistic in my approach have to be um so yeah so th this is this that was the beginning the the thing the problem was after after meeting ra i wasn't really interested in anything else <laughs> i just wanted to know more so i began to follow him around um you know to go to his courses and um in one of those sessions uh, he, he needed a venue and i offered my house uh, the house at the time was quite a big house to have a group. Yeah. Uh, this was on the band too, and this is a film that's going to be on the website fairly soon. Oh, fabulous. Um, so the, how, the, how everything began, you know, mystical course, a wonderful thing to, for me to start off. And because of that, I ended up doing the filming for him for many years, either me filming directly or getting other people to film. So there are a lot, there's a lot of original film that really no one else has seen. Apart from oh, that's amazing. So you learned directly from uh, the man who created the modality. And if yes, you can explain a bit about, <laughs> you know, what human design is. So I know it incorporates with sort of the I Ching, Kabbalah, astrology. What exactly did he bring together to create this system? Um, well, it was, it's a synthesis of a number of things. So the main, the main component really is the I Ching. Yeah. And, um, it basically gives us all possible human experience. 
And in the traditional way, it's, it's read in a linear way. They're, these are hexagrams, little chop hexagrams. So six lines in a hexagram. And there are all these variants of experience that we can have. The, the difference with human design is it's actually put into a body graph, a nine-centered format that makes it personal. So for example, each one of us has certain attributes, which you can, you can define precisely. Wow. And it's, it, it, it's like a mixture between genetics and ancient wisdom. So there's also the Kabbalah and, and a bit of the chakra system. And so there's some astrological reference just to get the, uh, the placement in the Maya. It's, it's a way of interpreting who you are at a personality level, at a biochemical level, at an unconscious level. Um, there's lots of different aspects. I mean, it takes years and years to go into all the aspects of it. It's a complex science. But it's also an art. It's the ability to be able to read all these keynotes. Every, you know, a number to me, a number in, uh, in, in the human design chart opens up lots of different levels for me because I've gone into them. Yes. So I use that to, to weave the story of whatever it is that's relevant to us in the reading. It's access, basically. Access to the uniqueness. We're all unique. And this is access to that uniqueness. Without that, I don't know how the hell people are supposed to live. I mean, you see the results of it. People Absolutely. don't really know who they are. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what they should be doing. They kind of guess at it. They listen to other people. They have their own experience, which might have been completely wrong for them. Yeah, uh, like me. After that, yeah, so it goes on. It goes on and on. And this is a way of clearing the decks. This is a way of resetting at least in information. Once you get the information, you then, you know, you're obliged to experiment in your own life and then you'll see for yourself that so, it works, something that's natural. So absolutely, and, and one of the things, uh, and you spoke about it, you know, you've taken years to uh, perfect this science and um, you, you talked about the nine-centered being. Now, I've, I've, um, I've heard that we've moved from a centered being to a nine centered being what exactly does that mean well actually we move from a five centered being to a seven centered being to a nine centered being so um there's an evolution there's an evolution in consciousness and um from 1781 the nine centered being came into into existence that's what that's what we are we, we call ourselves or Ra called us um uh, a being in transitus. So, so Homo sapiens in, transi in transitus. In other words, we are a transitionary species. Wow. That is not the end game. You know, we think we're so great because we've achieved so much, especially over the last cycle uh, with our technology and our, our engineering and our ability to look deep into matter and to look far away into the universe. We've done it damn good job yeah. we operate on self-reflective consciousness that's what humans bring to the table the ability to be able to think and to conceptualize and to measure yeah. but it's not the end of the story the end of the story well it's, the end of the story is a long, very long way away uh, because human design also brings in the ability to look into the future according to the patterns it's not only not that we are simply a pattern yeah. in a large program but actually it's it's an ongoing wheel an ancient wheel this reap that's already run before this is not the first time same story but the difference is that we can wake up in it that's that's what human design gives you the the opportunity to emerge from all the conditioning and all the nonsense that we've lived because we do have we are a pattern in a program but so is time so we can look back in time and we can look forward in time um, to see where everything is going and what the general thing. It's just so fascinating that um, Ra, I mean, he was this information channeled to him because it, it's so deep, it's so detailed. Um, and how did, how did he think this up? Uh, he didn't think it up. He was out walking his dog at the time and uh, in Ibiza, just living free. Yeah. Um, and he comes back to his ruina, which is this kind of tumble-down place 
but only had one door, big old door in Ibiza. He had the only key. And he had, uh, he had no electricity. He used a kerosene lamp. Wow. And he was coming back in the early evening. He could see a light under the door, which didn't make any sense because he didn't have enough money for kerosene, so there was no way light could be there. Yeah. Um, he had the only key, and it was a big solid, one of these ancient, you know, one of these huge keys. That door would not have been easily opened, and it was, it was closed, and yet there was a light on. So he moves towards it in some trepidation, and there's this big dog's with him. This is a sheep-eating dog that he befriended, a wild dog that he befriended. And he opens the door, and the dog rushes in, and you think, okay, well, whatever's in there is going to be dealt with. But no, there's a sudden... <laughs> and the dog's on the floor. You know, now I probably would have run off at that point. Rod goes into the door. He goes, he's angry now. Someone's killed his dog. He walks in there. Same thing happens to him. He collapses on the floor. He said that it was the most incredibly painful thing he's ever been through. Um, all the water left his body, he described it. It's almost like he was, he's, because water is memory. He was almost like being reset. And the only way that the pain left him was when he heard this voice. He, sound, he said it sounded like a 95-year-old woman who'd been smoking 100 fags a day, <laughs> you know, and she just said one thing, you know, are you ready to work? And as soon as the voice was there, the pain left and he got up and, and basically he was, he was told this. So it's not like he channeled it. it, it he, met, he met the forces. If you want to know more, there's a, I, I've put a little bit of the preview in the, in the preview to my ABC course under the courses. Um, there's a bit of a clip in there about Ra took me to the place where he had the experience. Um, you know, years after it had happened, mm -hmm. and then describe what it was like. Um, and there's also going to be people more. So. In the story of how the system came about, they could go to your website and find yeah. it. On the website. They can. They can. They're in the place that I mentioned, and also when I've got the band to film up, he talks in more detail there. Amazing. Uh, so it, it was basically it was a, it was experience that he was kind of. I mean, most people would have died from that experience. Wow. Was being informed, he describes it as being informed by all that is. There are, there are these crystals of consciousness, if you like, and every being, every blade of grass, every living thing has a, uh, has a, a kind of consciousness. Yeah. And he was in touch with all of that because of where he was and the timing. So it was just, you know, he was in the right place at the right time. Took eight, 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 eight. The year was, what was the year that this 19, 1987, same time as I started the magazine. Wow. I mean, 1987 was one hell of a year, you know. If you look at people born in 1987, <coughs> or people who've had experiences from then, you'll see. I mean, it was a remarkable time. There was um, a lot of information coming to the planet. Yeah. Um, and Ra, picked, Ra was right there. So... He gets this information. So you imagine, how could he hold all this information? Right. He had the kind of mind to be able to do that. He has a, um, a, a channel, a 4323 channel, mm -hmm. a channel of structuring coming from the arjuna to the throat. So this is part of the nine-centered model. Right. <laughs> and, and so he, could, he can hold a lot of information. But I mean, eight days and eight nights, quite a trip. And yeah, he was losing energy at the end. But he was told a lot of things, and he and because of his dog, who was you know he kicked under the table, he asked about dogs, and he asked about the form of of other other species, and from that we get we get the form of insects, we get the form of uh, mammals, uh, we get the form of cells. You know, there's other information that comes through. So this uh, is human design, but actually it's applicable to everything on this planet. It's the, it's, if you want a, if you want a quick, um, so a few one-liners, uh, human design is the mechanics of the Maya. We live in an illusion, you know, where, where we think we're separate from everything, despite people that hold to the belief that, you know, we're all one. Well, in a way, we're all connected. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they are beginning now to discover that the space is not empty, not at all. And there is, there is this connection. So 
we're held together in an illusion and we get to experience this life in a particular way according to our pattern. We see differently. I mean, it's phenomenal. I've done experiments. I mean, I've been at this for more than 20 years, so I've done experiments and I've managed to narrow down certain, yeah, key alignments in people that would blow your mind. I'm not ready to reveal that yet, but I've tested it and I'm going, what, really? So wow. I've run, run a few tests. It's like with the, with the right alignment every time, every time, every time, two people will be able to communicate non verbally. So it's almost and, and some kind of predictive method? So is it a predictive method? Yeah. Um, in, uh, in, what, in what sense? So I mean, I, I, I run experiments practical experiments with my with my courses and with my friends and yeah. pretty much one that I see if I think well this is an interesting one let's see what we can do see what yeah. I can learn because um, and so I, yeah I found out various things that, that are not out there at the moment in terms of a predictive system mm. yes it is unfortunately it is there is this um, we can live as ourselves or we can live according to our conditioning which right. most people do. So when when people are living according to their conditioning, um, then it's very predictive. It's it's boring. You know, you you have people with in the in the nine centres. There are um, some of them are coloured in, and some of them are not coloured in. Mm. Um, unless unless you're a reflector, then none of them are coloured in. Mean, let's say for most people, for all but one point four percent of us, there's some colour, and. <laughs> That's, that's, where you're, that's where you're designed to be, that's the true self. The open centers are where you're trying to be something you're not, and that's predictable. So for example, uh, well, we look at when we look at your chart, I'll, I'll right. put out so this, general. This is probably a good time to go, at, like, so we have four different types. We do. Human design, so could you go a little bit into those types and a little bit about what, what it means and you know the charts, the colored bits, the not colored bits, so that okay. people can try to understand what we're talking about when we talk about projectors, reflectors, manifestors, etc. Okay, well, there are four types, just as four types of human being, just as there are four types, four blood types, and you know, manifestors are about, uh, they're about 10% of the population now. Um, they are, they have a closed and repelling aura. These are people that just can, they just want to be free. They just want to get on and do their thing. They don't want to be controlled by anyone. Uh, they can be very angry people if you get in their way. Um, they can be very peaceful people, angry peace people if you're, um, you know, if you don't get in their way. But so this is one type, manifest, is here to manifest in words or in action, yeah. or both. I mean, with energy, it's really, really the action can be there too. In other words, they've got the energy to do stuff. Um, the next variety, most of us are going to I think I the generator type has an open and enveloping aura. Mm -hmm. So we can be, you know, what comes out of us. We have a life force that can keep on going on and on and on if we respond to the thing that's correct to us. So we have something in us, a power in all generators, all manifesting generators, which is a subset of that, right. which can, if we respond to a sound. So, you know, when you asked me, do you want to do, do you want to do this interview? I went, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. And there was a, mm, there was a movement of energy. Right. Um, and so here I am. If, I, if you'd asked me to do one of the interview and I got a nothing, then it would be, no, that's not correct for me. I don't have to know why. Right, right. So it's about living in that way. It makes it a very interesting life. And it means you can follow your life force. When we come to the projector um, type, which is your type, we're talking about a focused and penetrating and absorbing aura. So for you, it's very much about dealing on a one-to-one -one basis with different people. Yeah. You know, you're here to be able to guide people. The generators are here to do stuff. They're here to work, basically. Our work has to, we have to love. Projectors aren't here to work all the time. They don't want to work all the time, none of them. You know, nor do manifestors for that matter. But I mean, projectors don't necessarily have the energy to do that anyway. But they do need to be recognized for the guides that they are. 
So really working on a one-to-one -one basis is good for them. Working at a managerial basis, being able to see the people working, to see, well, wait a minute, they're not happy. Let's, let's see if we can, maybe they need to move to a different department or whatever it may be. You know, you're tuned in more to what's going on with others. And in that sense, you can tend to lose yourself in the other and forget about yourself. And, and especially when you're trying to guide them, you kind of disappear, it's all about them. So projectors naturally are more interested in the other. Um, usually when I'm doing a reading for a projector, they'll say, oh, can you check out my partner or can you check out my kids? I mean, you'll want to do that as well yeah, because yeah. It's, you know, you're, you're here to guide, you're here to guide. You know, you're here to penetrate in to see what's going on, to see if the frequency that you're picking up is actually being played out in the way that they're operating or not. And now, in time, you might have said this before, but I think we've got part with internet connection. But so, um, generators are what the majority of the population. The generators are yes, and 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 so then there's the uh, projectors are around twenty two percent now. Yeah. Manifestors around ten percent. About one point four percent are reflectors, wow. and these are people that don't have any fixed life force. They literally reflect. They're not really here for. They're very, they work in a very, very, very different way to everybody else. They experience time in a very, very different way. They're, wow. you know, they're more tied to the moon than the sun. They're, they're, they're more tied to, you know, they're, they're interested in groups. You, when, I, when I have a reflector in my, in my courses, I watch them because then I can see how the rest of the group are doing. They're going to reflect the general vibe of the group. Wow. You ask a reflector what they want to eat and they'll go, well, I'll have the same as everybody else. You know, they're, they're here, they're like, um, they have a, like a Teflon type of aura where things are not supposed to stick to them. It doesn't mean they can't get caught in conditioning, but it's not really supposed to, they're supposed to be able to reflect, to be able to assess, to be able to judge what the hell is going on. And they can be good at it if they're not caught in their own conditioning, which of course can be massive and they can be very lost. So there's a period, there's education that's needed about human design at a personal level, you know, a single reading and it's all sorted. Yeah. You'll have information. Wow. So this is kind of what I wanted to get onto next was this idea of self, not self, because everyone in, in their human design has these uh, I guess these categories called yourself and not self. So could we maybe go into that? And I think maybe so that people can understand how reading might go, we could look into my chart um, and, you know, then just take the conversation from there so that people understand the kind of questions we can ask, the kind of information we can get. No problem. Let's, uh, let's share the screen. If this can share, hold on. Um, okay, so there we go, good. So hopefully you will now be seeing this. Can you see that? Can you see the chart? At the moment, no. How about that? Oh yes, now I can. Okay, so let me see if I can move me over there too, so I can see you at the same time. Okay, no, that doesn't. <laughs> oh well, what the hell? Okay, we'll just have to do it this way. All right, so I'm looking at the chart. Um, all right, can you see my pointer here? Yes, I can. Okay, so I don't. All right, so you're you're a projector, which basically means that. Um, you don't have a sacral center. The sacral center is what makes someone a generator. These are the nine centers. They're triangles and they're squares. Right. And where there's color, that's the true self. That's the consistent side of you. Right. For example, you have a, you know, you've got a fixed mental aspect. This is, you can see this triangle behind the chart and here's the head. Yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the fra this is the framework the context in which you think, and you think a lot. You are a thinker. You're designed to think. This is a this channel of awareness here is this this mixture of trying to find out esoteric information, what's behind things, 
um, your mind that repeatedly goes back and back and to, again and again to, you know, try and break through to the mysteries. Yeah. And at the same time, you've got a very logical mind, quite a judgmental mind that likes to deal with what's real. You know, how can we apply it? You know, what is the way that people should be? How should you be? Your mind will be speak will will be very logical. So individual and logical and this is also an analytical side of you which is why i thought you'd be good at asking questions because you know you you think in questions anyway don't you are you a walking question mark with this design up here but at the same time you're also here for this center is an awareness center of intuition and instinct and here you have perfected form the channel of perfected form this gate 57 linking to this gate 10 creates a quantum of the two. So here in 57, we have the you know, clarity, the clarity of intuition, um, the intuition to be able to know how to behave in any situation. You don't even have to know how. You, you, you automatically will, will behave in the correct way. Because, so that's, I don't want to overcomplicate it, but basically you, these are two sides of you Mm -hmm. the splenic center the intuitive instinctual center the g center the identity you have a fixed identity you're here to express yourself in your own unique way um, and separate from that we have the head and the speaking side of you it's like the sides in you but they are fixed this is what we call the true self because that's always going to be the case for you always when we're dealing with um the whiteness, this is where we can get conditioned. So again, generally speaking, because there are subtleties, but generally speaking, your not self, your conditioned self would always be in a hurry, leaving, leaving things to the last minute and then rushing to get through them. And, oh, you know, the pressure and like, oh, God, you know, living in a kind of a panic and an emergency state, um, basically because you like it, basically because it's exciting. You know, you can get very bored because it's, you know, this, is, this, this gate here wants stimulation, wants things to be really stimulating, interesting. You know, this one feels like a change, you know, bored now, I want to do something different. You know, this mind thinking about the future and, and, you know, what could be possible. So there's all kinds of things going on. Yeah. So there's a tendency to basically get lost in trying to rush and hurry. Uh, that's the story of my life. <laughs> Yes, and so it's about now you know that when you catch yourself rushing, breathe, take a breath and go, wait a minute, this isn't correct for me. I'm actually here to live a life that's restful, that's actually, you know, peaceful. You don't, you're not here to be, so, so that will begin to drop. The more you operate according to one thing, and that's the strategy and the authority. You can see on the chart here, if I can open this one up, if you'll let me. You can see here we've got the strategy, wait for the invitation. Right. So, you know, you're here to wait for someone to offer you something that's going to suit you. You know, if someone says to you, you know, I'm not too sure how to sort this out. Can you help me? I, you know, I'd like to know what you think. Perfect invitation for you because, you know, you do think <laughs> and you like thinking and you like helping people, you know, so that would be a great invitation for you. Uh, no, if they actually, actually that's, that's um, really interesting that you say that because I wanted to see, you know, how, how we can use human design in, in our daily life in terms of given our chart and given our tendencies, um, uh, we have gifts and abilities. So um, obviously from what you've just said, I've realized that I've lived my life for the last, well, 39, 40 years completely in the wrong way, rushing around, uh, trying to be like everybody else, yeah. working in banking. And my current, um, my current role for the last couple of years has been as an intuitive reader, really as a guide. And yeah. so this is kind of all making sense to me, which is why I was, I was so excited to find you and human design. It's very exciting. <laughs> That's another reason why I'm in. I like stimulation too. And this is incredibly stimulating stuff because it goes into everything. It's the mechanic of the Maya. It's the science of awakening. It is, um, it is the science of differentiation. 
we are all different. We are all different. I'm a twin, right? I have a twin sister. Oh, Our wow. chants are not the same. We're born half an hour apart. Our chants are not the same. You wow. know, I've, I've done readings for um, two reflectors, so they're people without any, any color in the chart, any yeah. fixed as I've described, and three minutes difference in the birth time I was given. So on the surface it looks the same, but then there's another hidden chart. Wow. Uh, there's a more advanced chart, and again, it takes time to read. I'll just show you the chart here. So even twins, you for can example, can, have, can be different types, because my brothers are twins. Um, yes, it's possible. Wow. It's not, it's, not that it, it's not that it would happen, um, but it's possible. Wow. So that, I mean, we, we, the time of birth is really important, and, and a lot of countries don't really understand that. Wow. Uh, you know, the, it, it's like everything. When you, when you go into something for the first time, entering into something, entering into a new relationship, entering into a new career, the time at which you do it sets a whole pattern, which is why, we, why the whole point of human design, the practical aspect of human design, is make correct decisions in other words you're here to wait for the invitation but the invitation is also tied to your in your intuitive authority which is the brown triangle on the left right i mean this is this is this is the splenic area this is your your you're highly intuitive you're here to make instant decisions you're I, here to be spontaneous I, this is why i'm doing what i'm doing now because my intuitions obviously you know i, I read people for a living now and yeah. Just get information and you know we everyone can decide where I get it from but I feel it in my body when something is true and I guess this, this is reflected in my chart yes absolutely you're, you're going to there will be sen splenic sensations coming from here it's really there to keep you safe in the now right. so when you feel it's this is a place of fear yeah I mean fear makes us intelligent you know, you're standing with a group of people and suddenly someone walks in the room and you get this sudden rush running through you, like a shiver or goosebumps that run over you. And it's like, and it's not good. It's yes. saying to you, keep away from them. Yes. And same thing, you can, get a, you can get a rush and it could be something pleasurable. It can be like, hmm, this is for me. You know, it wouldn't be the hmm, but it would be Totally. Interesting. And you start, you know, instantly in the moment, not to overthink it. That's the challenge in the deconditioning process for all of us. So there is a, we've been conditioned. Mm. All of us. The reason you're running around all over the place is because you've been conditioned to. You're around someone, people, your parents or your siblings, they would have had a fixed center here. Like, yeah. well, society at large, right? Because like, like Bill Clinton, for example, he has this, this center fix. So when you're around people that have that, you're going to amplify it. Right. And you're going to feel like, okay, I must do this. I have to do this. And you go rushing around, amplifying what someone else has brought to you. Yeah. And yet when you get back to, you know, out of their aura, it's like, oh, I'm tired. Whoa, I just want to, you know, it's like it's too much. So we learn, and, and there's a seven-year initial deconditioning process. The information, you know, knowledge isn't power. Knowledge is an opportunity for people to experiment for themselves. You experiment waiting for the right invitation and listening to your, and then feeling your intuition run through you and making decisions on that. Starting right. things off from a correct decision. Right. Everything changes. You suddenly find yourself around people that will listen to you. You'll suddenly find, you'll find yourself around people that want to hear what you have to say. You suddenly find yourself in places where you're invited into think tanks because you can really think outside the box with your kind of mind. And, and yes, you can deal with the everyday, but you want to deal with more than the everyday because of the channel of awareness. So it, it's, a, it's a process of letting go of what no longer serves us. It's understanding what gets in the way, understanding what gets in the way. For you, here with all these white, these four white centers right. are all motors of one sort or another. So you're here to, you will amplify the energy of anyone who's around you, who is any one of these centers or all of them. So you get to pick up on the energy of the person. That's why you fit it in the body. I mean, you know, 
you feel it in the body because it's like, whoa, where's that coming from? It can be nice for you. You might like the warmth of it. I mean, you enjoy being around energy people, but then you stay too long with them, that kind of thing. So you begin to experiment. You begin to see what works for you. You begin to come back into balance. You begin to make great decisions. The life changes. Simple. Well, this is, I mean, in terms of, you know, daily life, I realize that I'm very sensitive to places, groups of people, situations, and it doesn't make sense. So if I try to explain it to someone, they, they think I'm going crazy. They're like, there's no logical reason that you should feel that way. I feel it about certain countries, about like places. And it's very difficult to describe to people. And I, all I can say is it just feels good or it doesn't feel good. Perfect. That's, that's exactly, the, this is the feel good or the not feel good in the spleen. That's exactly the way to make decisions. You don't have to explain it to them. You know, it's you to live your life. So if we're all unique, we've all got a different life that is kind of waiting for us if we get on the right track. Yeah. You know, you're here to, you're here to have an adventurous life, quite a, you know, a certain amount of, you know, ups and downs and chaos. And the same as me, we have the same nodal path. Here are the nodes. Let me take my little annotation thing. Let's see if this works. Here. Now, so not only can we see attributes and propensities and tendencies, we can also see a path. And this, you know, this path can be described. You know, you have a three, six road you walk along. So it's going to be a bumpy road. It's going to be an interesting road. It's going to be an adventurous road. It's going to be a road where you, you know, you try to find perfection, but things don't work out, but you learn why and you, you learn mastery through that. You know, you're, it's about the critical awareness of really what is the point in things? What is the point? What is the, you know, what is, what is wrong? Who needs to be challenged? What, what nonsense is out there that you have to make sure that the people in, Positions of power really know what the hell they're doing because there's a concern that they have no idea. I mean, that's something that's probably one of the reasons why you're doing this. Um, so, you know, that, so the road can be, there's so much, you know, I, I, I do all kinds of readings. I, I forget exactly how many of them, I think 15 or so different types, but it's like whatever, when someone comes to me, it depends what they want to know. I don't care what the questions are. We'll go wherever we have to go to for me to see the recognition in that person that the information penetrates to them, which is why I like doing video um, yeah, reading. You can see their reactions. And you know, when you're, you were describing this, it, it kind of explains why I've moved so many countries, I've had so many jobs, I've been all over the place. And I think it's also part of my whole projector thing where we just keep feeling we're failing. I'm always trying to, well me, I'm always trying to fix myself. Well, the, you, you see, the, 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 when I talk about us being patterns in a program, I mean it. Yeah. For example, you use the word failing, and the reason that that's a fear of yours is because you have the fear of failure here. Wow. In the 32. It's conscious. It's something that you're aware of. Yeah. You know, the, the, there are levels of, there are depths. And look, it's not like human design... Yes, it can answer many questions, but it doesn't take away the mystery of the life. Right. You know, when, you, uh, when you say yes to a correct invitation, you don't exactly know where it's going to take you. You might think you do, but no, you, know, you don't know who you're going to bump into. You don't know what doors are going to go up. You don't know where it's going to lead to. So there is this, the mystery continues. In fact, life gets more, much, much, much more interesting. You know, when I meet someone these days, I don't just meet them according to what, who they say they are and what I pick. You know, I get their chart and I go, okay, this is what I'm going to be dealing with for the next hour long it is. And, and then I can learn from it because right. although I know so much about the system and have done, I don't know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of charts and readings I've looked at, um, I still learn because, you know, you, the, the, the channels that you've got, you've got three channels in the chart but they're in a particular framework. There are multiple ways of, 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 every gate has so many different ways of being 
picked up on. It's a deep system. I mean, I, I don't want to go into the, the details because it's just going to be too much for people. But just to give you an idea, if I clear that. We have here, we have a channel of, you know, two gates. These are gates, two gates joined together. We have lines. Ah, we did have lines. <laughs> okay. All right. So, strange. Okay, let's see if I can get that back. Hmm. Okay, so let's try. Okay, oh, I know, I know. This is Caesar's trial and error. I'm, I, I have a one, I have a one three profile, so I'm here to learn. Good. <laughs> and learning by trial and error. Perfect. Is, is, is what happens. Well, not we don't all learn that way. Actually. Oh, really? So I, I think that's really, you know, because we're talking about projectors, obviously, and projectors have to wait for the invitation, but you're a generator. So for generators, it's a different theme. Yes, it is. We, we, it, 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 there are different layers. So I'm just going to um, stop the share while I sort things out. Okay. Okay, so there we're back, hopefully. Good. Um, yeah. So this is, um, where were we now? <laughs> I've, got, I've got three screens. Here. We were talking about, we were talking about... Generators, you know, so I have a projector, the, we have different themes. The, 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 there are four types, but also underneath this, in the details, in the attributes, there is, there is the, whether it's conscious or not, what the quality is in terms of the gate, what the frequency is in terms of the, the aspect of that gate, what the line is. Then we go into color and then we go into tone and then we go into base. So there are, I think it's like a half, so we get through a hundred, a thousand and ninety-eight, is it? Ninety-eight or twenty-eight different vari uh, variant uh, aspects to every uh, element. Wow. It's, we, we are unique and, and, and it's all mixed together in this pattern that we are. If you can accept your pattern, and I wouldn't accept it till you've tried it out, and yeah. you'll see, and then you can. It's through the experience, really. Once you get to live your design, even once, even making one correct decision will make a difference. You, well, I think, um, you know, one of the things, uh, yeah, the one of the things I found so useful when we spoke last time was this whole thing of waiting for the invitation because it could kind of explain the story of my life where I have been trying, you know, I, I might have applied to over 5,000 jobs in my life, you know, online, how normal people get jobs. And I have never, ever done that way. Um, in my early 20s, the only way I got a job was either I worked with someone, it was a recommendation. Yes. Someone, it, you know, someone had seen me, I had worked with a client. Those were the only ways that I got a job. And then I realized I spent 20 years doing everything the wrong way. Yes, I mean, I can, well, look, I can understand your qualities of banking. I mean, there are aspects in you, the logical mind is going to be good with figures. The 32nd gate that I've just called the fear of failure is also the, um, a great, Finance, you know, chief financial officer gate, if you like, in that you know how to assess things. You know the the how to assess the value of something. You know whether you're getting it, you know, at a good bargain price or not, or or whether the person that you're dealing with, you know, is really putting their back into the work, or if they're skiving. You you know, you've got the awareness. So I can see it could be applied to that, but it's not going to be interesting enough for you because you do have this kind of mystical aspect that wants to know about the mysteries. So banking ain't going to do that for you. No. Bit, of, bit yeah. of something else, but if you want to just be all that you are, then... And this was the thing... I think an approach to, to yeah, the world. When talking, so when you're talking about like the mystical, because you know I'm really into the mystical, occult, everything esoteric, and this has been an interest of mine since I've been a very young child. And um, is that... Can you see that in my chart? Sure, that is that is the channel of awareness. Wow. Uh, 
It's actually, let's see, where are we? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're not only the 61st gate right at the top. And we're not seeing the screen anymore. Okay, let me try and get that screen. I forget how I did it now. <laughs> um, oh, I did it from here. No wonder. Okay, right, okay. So I've restarted the MMI and nothing's happened. Technical things. That's all right. I think we're going into micro so it probably oh, okay. stays a lot. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it instantly. Oh, we can do it as well. That should do it. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, something's coming up now. I think we just have to carry on. So basically, yeah, there's, an there's, a, there's, a, there's an aspect in you. When I talk about occult knowledge and I talk about the mysteries, you have it in the line of research. So you're going to be, the, the pressure is for you to, to want to um, research the mysteries. It's built into you. It's built into you. It's part of your destiny. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you, it has to be the case that this comes out or you're going to not enjoy your life much. Well, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And, um, you know, even when I, for example, in, in terms of how human design makes sense to me, my application, my daily life, Yes. I realize that in my work now, you know, a lot of the stuff, obviously, I read people for a living. So I, I also channel a lot of information. And so the way normal people, you know, if you go to a business course, which I've spent thousands on, I realize that doesn't <laughs> work for me. No. Um, this is why I wanted to bring human design to, you know, the people that follow me and to everyone is that, you know, not one size fits all. You have... 80% of the people who could go on a business course and apply all those things that will work, and then I do them, and then nothing happens. Yes, because you're not a manifester, you're not a generator, you know, you're not here. When you look at your chart, which we can now, we okay. can now share with luck. Okay. Uh, just got to get the mouse on the right screen. Three screens here, so give me a break. Okay. There we go. We should be back. Are we back? Oh, we're back. Yes. Okay. So here, here you can see what I'm talking about here. This is the head center. Yeah. And it's also here in the sun. And this is what I would call a destiny aspect to you. And you can see, I mean, just take my word for it it's to do with the mysteries. But here, it's in the line of research. Yeah. The pressure to know the fundamental principles. The capacity of concentration to explore the depths of inner truth and maximize its application to fundamental principles. There's a part of you that wants to externalize the, the fact that we are in a magical world, that, that you know, we are, that this, this is an amazing, life is amazing, basically. And you're here to be able to, to, to talk about that and, and see that. Um, you're here to take in all the all types of energy because of these op these four open centers. So literally, at an energetically energe energetic basis, you're damn right you read people. Yeah. See what you do, you're designed to do that. So, but I want you to see how specific. Now, beneath them, there is also um, color. Yeah. And tone and base. So there are another three levels, and I'm not going to go into them. Right. Uh, because, you know, the whole thing about learning human design is that you learn a piece at a time. It's yeah. like a puzzle, puzzle. And as you, as, you, as you do that, and, I, and, and, and you have these solid foundations of like, right, now you understand the centers. All right, now let's, now let's have a look at, the, at the, the gates. Now let's have a look at the channels. Now let's have a look at the lines. Bit by bit by bit by bit, you're taught. Or you can be taught if you want to if you want to learn what it's all about so that's that's what i would say um there are levels and levels and i want you to know that 
So what, what would it mean? So when someone goes in, obviously there's mybodygraph.com online, which is a free resource and people can bring up this chart. Well, they can also go to, <clears throat> they can also go to my website. Exactly. So can you speak a little bit about your website? I can actually, you've come, you've come, uh, at a very good time. I'm right in the middle of sorting it now. Right. And let's see, I should have it up here. This is the new site. So whoops. Okay. So you can go in if you, when you're, if you come in as a newcomer, yes. You can, you can find out about, well, let me actually, you can find out about some, you can get your chart straight away. So all you do is just click on get your chart, put in your details, create chart. This will be sent to you by and, email. And so uh, for the chart, we need to have your date of birth. So what if someone does not have their date of birth? Well, most people have the date, but they may not have the time. And, oh, yeah, and that's time the thing. Yes. So, so what I... Um, I mean, I don't really like to spend my time doing this, but I will on occasion. If someone, if someone knows if they're morning, afternoon, or evening, or roughly within the 24 hour period, I can ask certain questions yeah. often about the, um, what's beneath the line, things, uh, things that they may well know. And from that, I will look at the variance and see if I can find the, um, the, the time and I'm pretty accurate with it if they really don't but if they really don't know any part of the the day it will take me time I mean yes I've done it but it would be better than to go to a good uh, Vedic astrologer because right. a Vedic astrologer will be able to look at particular events in their life and which must happen must have happened um, and that will help them zero in on, on specific times. Even they can get it even down to the minute, whereas I can get it within a few, you know, minutes. But they can get it down to the minute if they're good. So find a good. And if you if you have some idea, then I can zero it in. Um, so basically, for the people who don't know the exact time of birth, they don't need to worry. There are ways to go to a Vedic astrologer, or they go to you, and you can guide them on who they can go to to get that information. Yes, I don't recommend a Vedic. I don't recommend any particular Vedic astrology because I haven't had a chance to look into it because I've been busy. Um, but someone who's had a lot of experience, who specialises in birth time rectification, would Perfect. be. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, Richard, so we, you know, you do different types of a reading. So obviously, you do the foundational reading like you did for me, um, but you can also do readings about, uh, you know, for couples in terms of relationships. Well, here we here we have the list, and again, I don't really do foundational read it, readings. I they you know, <laughs> too basic. I, I, I like to have fun with my readings. So yeah. look, if I'm going to do a reading, I'm going to go in and tell you about who you are and whatever is appropriate, and and the main things will be there. But yeah, it's the kind of readings people, you know, they they keep going back to again and again because there yeah. is the information is layered, yeah. and. You know, a, a single statement can get you thinking and that gets you opening up to other things. So anyway, I call it a personal comprehensive analysis. That, what, that's where people would start with me. Right. Yeah. We can look at the health system to see, to look yeah. about the dietary regime. I was going to ask you about, because a lot of people have um, asked me about, well, can we use human design to realize how we're supposed to eat, our digestion, whether we're morning people or evening people? Um, so, is, so you can do that as well. Sure. And that's called a PHS overview. Okay. So we can look at, we can look at partnership analysis. I do a fair number of those. That's always interesting. Yeah. Um, we can do solar return, so that, or, or what we call rave return. But anyway, it's basically every year you can look at the year ahead. You know, if you people come to me, say three months before the end of three months before their birthday, yeah. I can then look at what's what's going to come in terms of transit opportunities for them that they can take advantage of, things to watch out for, things to be. Um, yeah, things to take advantage of. So they're better prepared. So that's the solar return. Yeah. The Saturn return is something that comes in around when there are people are various, we can say 28 to 30 to 29, around that period, it changes slightly with everybody. This is quite a big turning point. Uh, this, is, this is when people 
um, really look at the structure of their lives to see where they can emerge from their parents, emerge from their background, etc. Right. Um, you know, just looking around, re coming into the world properly, really. You know, up until 28, you're just having fun a lot. You know, I mean, exploring things. It doesn't really matter. And then you moving towards your 30s, you think, oh, well, I better get my life together. Now. It's that. So it's, it, it deals with all that. The Uranus opposition is around 42-ish. Again, it could be 41. Again, it's different with everybody, but around that kind of period. And that's really the end of childhood. That's really like finding your way in so would that be like the life purpose time so because i am i guess i'm coming no. into that period now well no it's it's specifically looking at a chart a transit chart that comes over your existing chart yeah where the profile may be different or um you know it shows you how to be and the kind of environment that you're going to be in and the kind of challenges that you're going to be tested with same as Saturn, but it's this period. It's really about your way, you know, your life at that. So, it's a, for example, I started the magazine, um, uh, Kindred Spirit magazine, when I was uh, at, my Saturn, at my Saturn return, pretty much. Wow. Uh, I left London, went out into the country, wasn't sure what I was going to be doing. And then 1987, I was on top of um, uh, the tour in Glastonbury. Oh, yeah. And, harmonic of a convergence surrounded by yeah hippies and students and theosophists and um seekers and waiting we were just sitting on top of the tour in glasgow waiting we didn't know what we we're waiting for but there was this major lineup lineup yeah and it was coming down on that tour as i was picking up some rubbish one of the theosophists came up to me and she said what are you doing I said, I'm just tearing up a little bit because of all the mess, you know. And she goes, oh, not our people. And I'm going, our people, She's, that's the point. Everyone on here is all linked. We were all here. For, we self-selected to be here for the harmonic convergence. So, so it gave me the, 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 the spark on that day, on the harmonic convergence day, to start the magazine. So bringing together all the different holistic paths. And at the same, you know, around the same time, also human design, came, uh, human design came also into the world in that year. So that's how it started for me. So that was, that was Saturn. In Uranus, opposition, my way came by me meeting Ra. I met him when I was in my, in, pretty exact on my Uranus opposition. Wow. Um, you then move into Chiron, which is around 50 for people, 49, 50-ish. Okay. Um, and this is really the flowering, the time for flowering. And again, there's another incarnation cross that comes over. So, for example, let's just look at your chart for a second. Mm -hmm. So, can you uh, talk about this incarnation cross? Well, it's, it, it, we talk about it in terms of purpose. Right. You know, you're, you're the right angle cross of the Maya. You know, you're here to be involved in the cycles of the world. You're here to see, um, yeah. And again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go deeply into it. Basically, there is a framework where the life can be fulfilled. Your framework is to do with you really being fulfilled through using your mind, your mind going into what's going on, your mind going into um, what's going on with people, for example, or yeah. with the mysteries or whatever. Yeah. It's not going to be fulfilled through relationship. It's not going to be fulfilled just through relationship. It's not going to be fulfilled through, you know, you're bringing books out and things, you know, necessarily, um, or, or the way that you may get the way that you may use your body that's not going to be the answer it's not going to be the answer for transformation the answer for you the framework for you is to is for your your incredible mind to share that with others and that's what it's that's what's exciting ideas are exciting for you aren't they you're talking to you're talking to me i mean it kind of says it so um we can see there's lots of things you can see so um, there is a, okay, let me just say something else. We have a cross and the cross is the sun circle with the dot in it. And, and the circle with the cross in it is the earth. The earth isn't in astrology. Again, it's, we're not astrology. Right. 
So the sun and the earth together here in personality and here in the design create the cross. In your case, the cross of Maya. In my case, the cross of the laws. So I'm here, I will be, you know, for example, when I ran the magazine, it was my decision as editor and owner to decide what the hell went in it. My laws, you know, I'm not going to put that nonsense in. You can, you know, not interested in that. I don't think that's helpful. This, I think, is helpful, you know. So I would make the laws in that way. I studied philosophy at university. If I hadn't done that, I would perhaps be a philosophy teacher or wow. talking about the, the, law, the, the laws of philosophy or, you know, the different philosophers. But no, I'm here to, you know, I, I find myself in my, where are we? Let's see if I can get to that again. Oh, yes. In my Chiron, so cross of laws, I come into Chiron and there's another cross that comes over me. It's the cross of explanation. So here I am, in my car, on explaining the laws of human design. Right. You know, there's no after if you're living correctly, the cross takes over. You don't really have to worry too much about purpose if you're living correctly. If you're waiting for the invitation, if you're following your intuitive awareness, no problem. Your purpose will come out. It'll just happen. You know, it's so, about. I think for a lot of people, well. Let's speak about projectors because I am a projector. Um, this waiting for the invitation sometimes can be very difficult, right? Because apparently, are we just supposed to be waiting around for things to come? We can't actually make something happen. Well, you you know, you can see from you chasing after different, you know, trying to trying to get different jobs. It doesn't work if you, you know, it's not that you can't. You, you can't. It doesn't work yeah. that way. You know, yeah. jobs come to you through your friends and through your family because of your profile. Yeah. Uh, they come through, you know, the red carpet being laid down before you. Um, it's that kind of thing. It's not, it's not a matter of, um, it's not really a matter of you making it happen. You need to be in the right place in the right time. You need to be around the right people because after all, it's about people for you. Yes. So a lot of the time, you know, when... Um business coach, they talk about taking action, hustling, being consistent. For me, that never resonated with me, which is why I don't do it in the same way as so many business people do, because I post or I come online when I feel I should, and not just because weekly I have to come out with something because it seems too contrived to me. But that works for a lot of other people. Well, it's not contrived. It's not you, you see. Look, you're, you're, you're here in your chart. You have this as an extreme side to your, um, your identity, you know. And, and one thing you can't stand is being tied to time because this, oh, is, yeah. this has an aspect of time. This time can be found in different parts of the, the Maya and different parts of the body graph. Here, you're going to have a definite reaction to being um, reliable when it comes to time. You don't work in that way. You don't want to be pinned to a deadline. You hate it. You can't, you know, some part of you just has to, you know, go, no, we'll have to change it. You just sort of like that. I, I, when we started, you know, you know, due to electric, electricians, it was like, well, we yeah. have to leave it a little bit. Yeah. It kind of suits you. So if you were to try to adapt according to someone else's rules, how you should live, that's not going to work for you. You won't be able to do it. You'll never be able to do it. Well, that's why I did it. I actually did it for 15 years. You know, I woke up at 5 a.m. to be at the training desk by 6. And, and painful. I mean, yeah, well, you could, yes, you can do it. You just have a horrible life. I mean, Super people... Painful, but I did it because there's yeah. this, I have this willpower somehow. And I, I think from my childhood, no, you, you, you don't have will. You have fear of failure. That's so have, I was you, somehow there because I was like, I can't mess this up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and also there's a fear of tomorrow. So it was also like, look, if I, if I lose this job, then what am I going to do next? Because there is, that is that side. But again, this is personal to you. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Like, like not all projectors are going to be like you. Yeah. You're, they're going to have a similar, they're going to have an aura that can, that can penetrate into other people, that can absorb, that can really... Yeah, make that one-to-one -one connection. They've all got that, but some of them may have motors. 
Right. Some of them may be highly emotional, which you're not. Some of them may, be, may have an internal uh, pressure to do things and they can hold that. You know, you're, you're not that, you're not that kind. There are more different types of projectors than there are more different varieties of projectors than there are in any other type. You're really oh, quite wow. complicated as types are so concerned. Is, apparently what? Uh, mental projectors, emotional, classic? Yes, yes. I mean, there's all kinds, there's all kinds of, of different projectors. And again, one thing, uh, let me just point you, I've got to get my mouse back. I'm beginning to get the hang of this now. <laughs> um, there is, almost, yes, there we go. If we go to, and again, this website won't be made, there's a current one now with a lot of this on it, but it's in a different format. This comes out in about a week. Okay. This, this variety of things. So um, when we're looking at, um, yeah, when we're looking at projectors, there is, um, just clear that squiggly thing. There is a different, there's something called authority. Right. And there are different types of authority. So you can have a projector that's emotional. Uh, you can't have one that's sacral. So emotional projectors or splenic projectors, um, you can have ego manifested. Oh, no, you can't have ego manifested. You can have ego projected um, projectors. Okay. Uh, you can have uh, self-projected projectors. You can have mental projectors. So there's different types of projectors according to their inner authority, in order to the authority whereby they make decisions. We've all got a way of making correct decisions for ourselves. All of us. Yeah. One way or another. There's a way of operating. And that's the practical side of human design. So in your case, you're splenic. You're intuitive. Has right. to, decisions have to be made on, on the spot. Yeah. You, you know, overthinking is not going to be helpful for you, which goes against the whole way no, we do it. Yes. I mean, it doesn't work. It's, it, what works is to be yourself. And human design is a way to show you your own uniqueness precisely and that's its power and that's its that's what we want to get out and so it can. helps you to get more in touch with your innate ability skills um the way that you are motivated in the world and thereby help you to understand how to relate to other people how to react in certain environments jobs what you're good at well, I read, well, yeah, I mean, you know, yes, it can. But then you'd have to have someone who knows what they're talking about to be able to help you because there's a lot of people who have jumped into human design hearing a little bit, picking up what they can on the internet and, and, and actually speaking absolute nonsense yeah. because they don't have the, they haven't been taught, they haven't learned the details. They've picked up hearsay. And so we've got kind of Chinese whispers going on on the internet with people who misunderstandings being spread and propagated by people who really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. People, people have this, you know, gen the general idea is like, you know, if I can read it, I know it. And, and you know, it depends what you're reading. If, if you want to read something that's, that's really worthwhile, you can get your chart report from me. Yeah. You can get an advanced report, which is going to be more than 120 pages. Um, and that's 77 quid, which is pretty good. So that will be just on you. And that will go into the details of the, of the gates as well and whether they're conscious or unconscious. This is the only place where it's been described exactly how your attributes work, whether they're in a white center or whether they're in a fixed center or whether they're conscious or whether they're unconscious. I've gone through every attribute and described it according to how it actually will be experienced. And that's not available anywhere else. So that would be a very good way for people to dip their toe in. They just get an advanced report and they've got a, you know, a really nice uh, book on them. So yeah. I'm trying to make it easy for people. If, yeah. they want, if they want to really ask me questions or we, we go into further, we can go into a reading like this, personal comprehensive. I can do business consultancies too because my uh, experience in human design and in business, I mean, I ran the magazine. I've run, I've been self-employed since, um, since when? 
God. So what would the business... In my early, early 20s. So I, I know how that using that knowledge, applying that to someone is also... I'm helping a number of uh, businesses right now, um, looking at the partnerships between... Um, you know, who's involved in the business and what they're doing and what they're missing and what they cannot do together because they don't have it in them. Like you, you know, if you're, if someone had made you an invitation to say, oh, can you help me dig the garden? The only, you know, there would be, I don't think so. It's not what I do. You know, you like to use a lot of energy to do some manual thing, you know, no, not a good invitation for you. Yeah. Good invitation for a generator who's, who's got too much energy and wants to use it productively. Fantastic invitation for them. But and then you don't have to ask a generator you something. Up, you Sorry. have up here as well the, um, for people who are interested in, you know, um, are they gay people, night people, um, the food types? How, for example, how do you use human design in the way that you eat, in the way that you live? <laughs> well, I, I, to tell you how, how seriously I take this stuff, um, I'm a daylight eater. Yeah. So for me, it's better for me to eat with the sun on my skin. And I basically wait, and I'm here as my, uh, to operate correctly, to wait to respond to something, my energy to rise towards it, as I described earlier. Wow. So um, I basically... While writing that, that report, I traveled. I traveled to Corfu in the sun. So we had really, you know, the sun's, it's still sunny in February. It's fantastic. A nice and chill in the Greek atmosphere, great, great skies, all the rest of it. Then I went to Australia, you know, waiting to respond. Is there somewhere I can really put down roots that would be right for me? Right. And then I was going to go to the south of France and, and it was, I was really heading in that direction because I have friends there and I felt very peaceful where they are and I like the area, the uh, Basque uh, area in France. Yeah. You, are, you are 45 minutes from the Basque Spain. I mean, yeah. very nice area. So I was heading in that direction because I felt comfortable. But the French bureaucracy was taking a long time. So I, I just thought I'd check on, on the internet to see if there was anywhere near where I was staying in Somerset. And there was, and I fell in love. And this is where I am now. Um, so oh, wow. the response was so powerful, um, uh, you know, <laughs> it was like, that's what you have to do, Richard, no matter the risk, no matter the cost, no matter what, you know, it was like the response was overwhelming. So I, my body, you know, waiting for my body to tell me where I'm going to live and, and not getting it and not getting it, not getting it, not getting it, and suddenly bang, there it is. That's how I make decisions, big decisions. So, so you go by what your body was telling you to do and then you're in the right place at the right time. Exactly. Wow. Okay. That's really interesting. So if people want to have that information, they go to what the PHS. Well, they, they, they would, well, if they want to know how they operate, the, 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 the report really is the quickest and cheapest way of getting a really good download of information all about you. So that that's, that's where I would, they can get their free chart and they can see their chart straight away and they can do charts for others, no problem. So you can see, so by going to the, um, by going to the free resources and getting the chart, you can find, see your chart straight away. Right. You'll, you'll get a chart and you can put in anyone's name and you'll see their chart. You'll know what the type is. It'll, you'll have the, um, the listing of what's in there. So yeah. You'll have it as information. Uh, as labels anyway if you want to know and with this new new site only crazily I've also offered a free personal report so actually you're going to get I haven't worked exactly how many pages but maybe maybe 35 40 pages for free yeah just by going for this your your free personalized report here so actually you can get it, you can get more information immediately free which amazing um, and if you if you want the deeper version then you can go you can you can go and, and get the paid version but so i'm doing my best to because I, I the way this works is when people um recognize the truth as you said you know when when the truth has a ring to it and when they read the truth or hear the truth it's like god that's me yeah 
and you begin to you begin to think is it really possible yeah there really is something that can speak only about me is is there really such a science well yes there is and it's called human design but you you've got to you've got to go to people who know what they're doing otherwise you're going to get more misinformation that's my concern which is why i'm why i'm giving quite a lot of stuff away free because not only that let me tell you something else exciting because you've got me going now i haven't really the science of we're a few days from releasing it and i haven't really explored that much so this is the, the, the daily impact this will tell you on any day it will give you the chart of the day which yeah. is not. so you know we're being tied to rhythms today you know there is rhythm in the back with timings and things are part of what we're battling with or agreeing to or being pulled into today so this is from a planetary perspective this is using this is well it's still human design but it is from a, it's where the planet goes into the sun where the sun gets fixed in yeah. which and where it grounds in the earth but again it's not just the chart i've given a whole interpretation free every bloody day so how do we receive this? Do we get it by email or is, do we have to click into, the, into the, your website? You just hit, you just hit the, um, hit the uh, daily report. So free resources, go to Daily Impact, mm -hmm. which will take you to this page. And then just put in your email, Daily Impact oh, notifications, and it will go directly to you. And there's an image for each one. You know, this is probably we're in the, the gate of provocation today. So how would that? So how do we use this information for ourselves? Well, again, it depends. So let's see where you are. Let's see if you've got. Okay, so you've got a completely open solar plexus. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna join you up to your to any emotions. It's this gate that is here. So this is going to be a time when we'll be wanting to connect with someone at a deeper level you know making getting that making a kind of a connection the unique the unique spirit in that person you know saying you know making the joke or making that connection where you just feel yeah i'm on their wavelength kind of it's more than a wavelength really it's like a a recognition of um a spirit that you love so yes. it can be you people can be provocative you know someone for example for, let's say it's a mother and a daughter and the daughter's this unique spirit and she's sulking yeah you know, and she's not doesn't want to speak you know and the mother comes up and goes i think i can see a smile under that grin i think i can yes there it is there it is you know and then she starts laughing and the spirit is activated and recognized and met so right. it, it works in different ways but it's about provocation it's about um it's about trial and error, you know, and again, you've got the key, the, the words are up there. The, the information is now more available than it ever has been. So people have got no bloody excuses. It doesn't cost anything to get a short report. You just have to yeah. go to the website and get it. Website is by the way called human.design. That's it. Okay, I was going to ask. So the website is human.design.com. No, just human.design, no.com. Oh, I see. So you, okay, so, not, not, hold on, that's, that's temporarily. Um, design. Uh, let's see where I've got it big. Um, well, that's it. No.com, no.net, no nothing. Just human.design. Fabulous. Which I can't make any bigger for you on. That's fine. That's this. why I just wanted to make sure we had the right, um, the right. I made it as simple as possible. My my thing is like, let's make it simple. Let's make it easy. People want to know about it. It, it. Let them verify the truth by what they read, and and that should motivate them to experiment with their strategy and authority. And then you begin the deconditioning program. You know, which is basically no one's giving you a program it's you for example you experimenting with your splenic authority right and that's something you'll do and sometimes you will and sometimes you won't and every time you do you'll see it really works and every time you don't you think god i knew that yeah you knew that you know i'm realizing that more and more 
Yeah, so it's it's really it's really like that. That's what I that's uh, gonna come back. Have I got have I got us back to Yes the... you have. We're back. Oh, I'm learning how to <laughs> do this. Good. Okay, all right. So um, that was fabulous, Richard. Uh, I think people have an idea about a little bit about what human design is. Obviously, we haven't got into a lot of detail because there's so no, much. I think we've done quite well, actually. I think you've done very well. Come on, you've details in you. You've asked detailed questions and you have, you know, you've got some details back. I yeah, thought... yeah, but the, there's so much information out there. Uh, so that they can go explore your site, they can have readings with you, um, and you know, I will put your, your details below the video so that people can get access to your site. And new um, information will go out when? The new website will be live when? Um, look, to be sure, it's either going to be this weekend or next weekend. Okay, so towards the middle of July 2019. <laughs> I would say the Monday, yeah, the, the whatever it is on the Monday. Let's have a quick look. Uh, we're in July. And we're July the 4th today. So, the, so we're in the 4th. So I would say by the 15th of July, it should all be yeah. up and running. Okay, perfect. 15th of July. And then because the, the, the daily impact isn't available yet on the old website, the free report isn't available until the 15th either. There is, there is the charts thing. So you get a lot more for your money. There's also lots of preview films they can watch for nothing. Amazing. Uh, you know, I, my, my job is to empower people. My job is to kind of <clears throat> go, yes, you know, you really can find yourself this life. And it makes a very interesting life. So I want that. I, I want to meet more people who are themselves. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean, for me as well, the reason that, you know, you're one of the first people that I'm interviewing is because also for my work, um, as you know, I'm an intuitive and I love to help people find out more about themselves to basically empower them. And yes, you, you're empowering as well. Cool. Um, this is a huge tool that people can use. And, you know, we have obviously a lot of conditioning which you spoke about a lot of things that we've inherited like genetically from the group historically at a soul level and so for me this is a great tool as well for me to use uh, so that i can understand my clients better and then help them through some of this deconditioning absolutely absolutely it's very useful as a um in fact i'll be bringing out a i'll be bringing out a course specifically for human to be designed to be used as a uh, um, as a secondary thing for people already in um, alternative medicine or in counseling or whatever it may be yeah. uh, you know so quickly you you can see immediately just one look at the chart and you go okay open centers there they, these are going to be issues for the they're going to be probably going to be issues yes so it's it's a very it's great you know what can i say I, oh, by the way i mean you can see also on the website or the website I run, the national organization uh, for human design in the UK. Yes. So I, I, I not only did I work with Ra and, um, and, and filmed him, but I also, uh, I've also running the organization. So it's part of my job to educate people. It's part of my job to have all the books available. Uh, it's part of my job to, job to be a one-stop place where people want to know they can find out. Fabulous. So. I think that's a great uh, way to end. <laughs> So for okay. anyone who needs more information, please go to human.design. And you. all of Richard's details will be up there and you can spend hours getting lost in the maze of human design. And obviously you do uh, personal readings as well, which they can no. um, mm -hmm. sign up for. So thank you so much, Richard. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna just stop recording.